These days, you've probably seen a flood of headlines about DCR1, a mysterious model from China that's shaking up Silicon Valley and Wall Street. I think we should take the development out of China very, very seriously. A game-changing move that does not come from OpenAI, Google, or Meta. There is a new model that has all of the valley buzzing. But from a Chinese lab called DeepSea. On Monday, AI-related stocks took a hit, with NVIDIA shares plummeting 17%, whipping out $600 billion in value and marking the largest single-day loss in stock market history. Sam Altman was also quick to respond on X, announcing that free-tier users would now get access to all three meaning, while paid users would benefit from expanded query limits. We've all heard about its impressive power and cost-effectiveness, but today I'm taking a different angle. Instead of rehashing what you already know, I will be delving deeper into the story from a Chinese perspective. Who exactly built DeepSeek R1? Why did it come from a high-frequency trading firm rather than a major tech company? Why did China open source this model? And what does this development mean for China's growing influence in global AI? Let's dive in. expected China's breakthrough AI model to come from tech giants like Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, or ByteDance. Instead, it was developed by high flyer Huanfang Liaohua, a firm that most people outside China, even inside China, have never even heard of. So how did a small company achieve what even the biggest Chinese tech firms haven't? Founded in 2008, HiFlyer is a quantitative investment firm specializing in high-frequency trading. Their core business relies on algorithms and AI to process vast amounts of real-time financial market data. This deep expertise in handling complex, high-speed data laid the foundation for developing an AI model like DeepSeek R1. So why not a tech giant? Chinese tech giants focus on AI to optimize their business models, whether it's e-commerce, social media, search, or gaming. For example, Alibaba is doing online shopping, so they prioritize recommendation algorithms and supply chain optimization. Tencent and ByteDance focus on AI for gaming and social platforms. Baidu invests heavily in search and autonomous driving. In contrast, High Flyer operates in a completely different domain, real-time financial data. Their work involves massive data sets with extreme noise, high dimensionality, and millisecond-level decision-making. These challenges push them to develop cutting-edge data cleaning techniques, real-time processing capabilities, and advanced computing infrastructure, all crucial for trading large AI models. For example, their self-developed distributed training framework achieved 82% GPU utilization, far exceeding industry norms. Meanwhile, internet giants primarily collect user behavior data, social interactions, and search queries. Large in volume, but fundamentally different from the kind of data needed for training a model like R1. Now that we've covered data, let's talk about talent. Some Western analysts speculate that the team consists of mysterious AI elites. In reality, publicly available information shows it's a group of top university graduates, PhD students, some still in their fourth or fifth year, and young professionals with just a few years of experience. Unlike many leading AI labs, they aren't written from overseas. They are entirely homegrown Chinese talent. What they want to build is more than just a business, it's actually a vision. That is also an important factor of their success. High Flyer CEO Liang Wenfeng explains, Beyond technology, what truly matters is vision. We build large models not for finance, but for research and exploration. Many of our core team members have always worked in AI. Initially, we tackled finance because it was complex enough. Now, we believe general AI is the next great challenge. 
When journalists asked if their goal was financial AI applications, Liang responded, We are building AGI, artificial general intelligence. Large language models are likely a necessary step towards AGI. And they already exhibit some AGI characteristics. That's why we started here, but we will eventually expand into areas like computer vision as well. Driven by curiosity, they pursue strategy, foresight, and long-term AI investments. Unlike companies scrambling to acquire GPUs today, High Flyer started preparing very early, gradually securing 10,000 GPUs in anticipation of the AI bloom in 2021, as Liang described. From our very first GPU to 100 in 2015, 1,000 in 2019, and eventually 10,000, it was a gradual process. Many assumed that there was a hidden business strategy behind this. To be honest, it was just driven by curiosity. This curiosity-led approach, combined with technical excellence and long-term vision, enabled a quant firm, not a tech giant, to develop China's most powerful open-source GenAI reasoning model. Everyone knows we are in an AI race with the United States. So why would China open-source DeepSeek R1, knowing that the United States will likely replicate the methodology with greater computing power? In fact, that process is already on the way. Mark Zuckerberg set up war rooms immediately to figure out how the Chinese startup outsmarted AI titans at a fraction of the price and try to apply the strategy to develop Lama AI. So, to answer this question, let's hear from Liang Wenfeng. We won't go close the source. We believe that establishing a robust technology ecosystem matters more. This statement reveals the core strategy behind China's decision. It's not just about short-term gains, but about shaping the future of AI on global scale. DeepSeek's commitment to open source involves three key steps. Firstly, instead of rushing to monetize its secret formula, it prioritizes enabling global developers to innovate with Chinese AI technology planting a series of Chinese language AI in the digital world. Secondly, it leverages collective global intelligence to improve its technology. Thirdly, it subtly turns Chinese technological standards into international benchmarks. Maybe one day, Chinese grammar could become a fundamental in AI programming. Who knows? When European companies build products using China's open source R1 model, and Middle Eastern developers rely on Chinese-provided language datasets to train AI. China isn't just participating, it's shaping the global AI landscape through technology exports and data infrastructure. Why do people say this model marks a historic milestone for China? Firstly, it's a leap from application follow-up to foundational innovation. DeepSeek R1 marks a fundamental shift. China is no longer just adapting others' technologies for applications, but is now making breakthroughs in foundational AI innovation. This means we are competing with the United States on the same level in the AI race, breaking its long-standing monopoly in the tech industry. Second, a highly localized AI ecosystem is emerging. While China still relies on the global supply chain for some aspects, R1 has made significant progress towards domestic substitution across chains, frameworks, and model layers. For example, it was trained on 2048 NVIDIA H800 GPUs, but can also run inference on Huawei's Asian chips. Proof that China is on the path to building a self-sustained AI ecosystem. Third, the Chinese language is entering global AI standards. The emergence of R1 has made the influence of Chinese in the AI field increasingly evident. It excels in processing classical Chinese text and internet slang. The large volume of Chinese language corpora has also impacted other models. For instance, 
openly has own one model, sometimes now exhibits Chinese reasoning processes. This is actually because the proportion of Chinese content in global training dataset has increased by nearly 30%. China has also become more proactive in international standard setting. For example, the ISO organization has established a dedicated East Asian Language Working Group. In its recently released AI development guidelines, challenges such as Chinese word segmentation and idiom comprehension was included as standalone clauses for the first time. As Chinese continue to experience a deeper influence on the AI field, more Western universities may begin offering courses on Chinese natural language processing in the future. In the end, DeepSeek R1 isn't just a technological milestone, it's a symbol of China's shift from a technological follower to a rulemaker. It strengthens China's position in the global AI race and contributes Chinese wisdom to the world's AI development. So, what do you think? Have you already tested the model? Is open sourcing our one a generous strategy? Or is China taking a risk? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. For more deep dives into AI, see you in the next one.